Shalom, Israel, this is Kanai. Uh, this video is to go over what many people celebrate today, and this is not to my Israel, because many of you understand this, I believe so, uh, but this is for you to share with your friends that's in the world that don't understand that they're the Israelites and they must repent, talking about the so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitian, the indigenous people through North, Central, and South America that's scattered throughout the earth, all right? They make up the Israelites. But anyway, back to the point. Uh, this video is to go over what today many people celebrate in a Christian world, which they call Easter, uh, held on uh, the Sunday or the last Sunday of the month, something like that. Okay, let's begin, and Good Friday. Uh, let's begin with Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. And it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So for any of you, so-called Christians that believe in this Bible. It says, beware, and for us too, anybody who believes in the Bible, it says, beware lest any man spoil you. Why did Paul write beware? Because you're going to have men out there that's going, that's going to lead you away from God, and many of them are going to use the Bible. The way that you are, be, the, way, the way you make yourself sure, or you beware, is that you study the Bible and you have the, get the understanding thereof. And when you have the understanding, you can discern between right and wrong. All right. So it says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies, through their philosophical thinking of things, through, uh, like, here go, here go one philosophical way. See, eating pork in the Old Testament was wrong because the pork, the pig was used as the garbage uh, truck of the community. So today, through proper uh, inoculations and shots and the proper feeding, it's called the new white meat. That's somebody's philosophical thought. That's dumb. It said, and vain deceit and lies. Beware somebody fool you and destroy you through lies. Lie against what? Against what the Bible says. What we're going to go over today is a lie of what you call Good Friday and the lie that you call Easter. It says, after, after the traditions of men. Why? Because many of our people do things because why? It's tradition. People have been doing it for generations after generations and they're just following suit. Because grandma did it, grandma's mama did it, grandma's mama, mama, mama did it. And you know what? I get a new suit every Easter. The kids get the Easter egg basket. They have the Easter egg hunt. You get chocolate. And you just do it. But you're not doing it because God said so. Because I'm waiting for a Christian to prove this in the Bible. It says, after the rudiments of this world. Meaning after the workings of the world. Because your, your so-called uh, men that you hold in high esteem. The Creflo Dollars, the T.D. Jakes, the Juanita Bottoms, the Zachary Timms, the uh, all these... Uh, or wildlife, whatever these people are, <coughs> they do it, they teach you, and you think they're sent of God. It says, but not after Christ. Not according to what this Bible says. All right? I'm going to show you something real quick. Um, let's go to uh, First Kings. Because these men that you see, that's leading, these are not men of the Most High. God has not set these men up to teach this Bible. They are set up to deceive you and lie to you. So let's begin. Let's see what a man of the Most High is. Let's see what a man is according to God's words. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 2. And we're going to begin. Um, I'll start with verse 1. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, Go the way, I said, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong thereof. And show thyself a man. So David said, listen, Solomon, I'm dying. He says, he says, what? Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Now let's see, he's going to explain what showing yourself a man is. Does it mean doing push-ups, getting muscles like that? Does it mean gathering riches, money, like Kaddish world teaches you? Let's see what it says. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. To walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his judge and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whatsoever thou turn thyself. So, how do you show yourself a man according to the Bible by keeping the commandments? So, those men out there teaching, I don't care if they got gray hair, if they say they're not men according to what the Bible says. You must be keeping the commandments to be a man. All right. So let's go back to uh, to uh, this whole thing about. Let's start with Good Friday. Let's go to Matthew 26, and we're going to show you. Oh, you know, let's start with Matthew 12. We're going to show it to be a lie. All right, Matthew 12, verse 38. 
It says, Then certain of the scribe and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Christ is saying, this evil and wicked generation, they always want a sign. Like old people today, you believe a Benny Hinn because he's supposed to touch somebody's head and cure them of cancer. You're like, oh, that's the place to go. So there don't be no sign. Like back then, there's not going to be a sign. The sign today is your faith. This is the sign. It's Bible. Believe this. Hebrews 11 and 1. And you get a chance to read that. He says, the only sign he gave back then was the sign of Jonah. Let's see what the sign was. For as Jonah was three days and three nights, remember, three days and and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the in the heart of the earth. So this is what it says. Christ said the same way Jonah was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights, he said the Son of Man, which is him, is going to be buried. Don't just use the word dead, but buried in the earth three days and three nights. Okay, this is so simple, it's, it's ridiculous. Let's go to, let, let's go to, uh, I'm going to post online, you'll see this, I'll flash the line, a calendar for Good Friday. Alright? Because Good Friday was supposed to be the day that Christ was crucified, and he resurrected on Easter Sunday, so-called. Alright? Well, if he died Good Friday, right? He said three days and three nights. That means... He died Friday, Saturday makes one day, Sunday makes two days. Let's go through that again, nice and slow. If he died on Good Friday, he was, he was supposed to be in the earth three days, in the earth three days. He died Friday, Saturday would make one day, from sundown to sundown, Sunday would make two days. How do you have three days? Many people would say, see, he died Friday, Saturday, and he came back Sunday. We're going to prove that wrong also. All right? Let's go from that <coughs> to Matthew 26. Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to do some jumping around. 26 and verse... Let's start at verse 17. It says, now... It says, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare th for thee to eat the Passover? So here we go. This is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They are looking. Where are we going to prepare the Passover for thee? So the Passover Feast of Unleavened Bread, they're one and the same. They interjoin. At the end of one day, begins the Passover. The beginning of the next day, which is sundown, begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right? They said, so that was the day coming up to that feast. They said, where do we prepare it for thee? All right? Let's get that. And he said, go into, the, go into the city to such a man and say, unto, and say unto him, the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with thy disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. So that day, the day of preparation, it was making ready the Passover. To be kept when? That night at even. Right? It says, Now when the evening, now listen, now when the even was come, when the evening came on, he sat down with the twelve. He sat down with the twelve at night, at even, to begin to what? To eat the Passover. And they and they did eat. And, listen, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So at even, when the Passover, the Feast of a Letter of Bread was being kept, he said somebody's going to betray him. Right? Remember this. The Passover at even, he kept it. Right? Let's go to verse 26. <coughs> um, verse 31. Uh, chapter 26, verse 31. Then said Jesus unto, then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended, this says, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. He said, all oh, you're going to be offending me this night. That same night, you're going to be offending me this night, because they're going to smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. We're going to pick up in video.
Okay, we're back. This is part two of so-called Good Friday Easter pagan foolishness. We're going to read again in Matthew 26, verse 31. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. So now, <clears throat> the reason I read this is for one point. Back in 31 it says, All ye shall be offended of me this night. So what happened? He ate the pass with them at even. It's nighttime. He's telling them what's going to happen. All right? This is the Feast of Our Love and Bread. Let's go from that to chapter 27, uh, verse 1. Now, when you read the rest of chapter 26, if you have time, uh, Peter said that he would not deny him. He told him the clock, the, the clock would crow three times and he would deny me. Peter went on. They, they took Christ. They came and captured him. Judas gave him away when he gave him away with a kiss. And they brought him to the temple. And um, Peter, went, went, uh, he weeped bitterly, realizing that he did exactly what Christ said. He denied him when he said, do you know this man? All right. So now we're in chapter 27, verse 1. Now listen to what it says. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. So they took counsel. That morning, the morning after what? The morning after the Passover. So Christ wasn't dead at this point. Christ was what? Still alive. What day was this? This would be what you call today Saturday, because remember, you said Good Friday was the day it happened. This would be the Saturday, or the Sabbath, right? All right, in the morning. So that was the final morning. Let's go from that. Uh, wait one second. And when they, uh, verse 2, and when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him unto Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Okay, so now that morning, Judas realized what he did. He repented himself and tried to bring up the money. They wouldn't accept him. All right, they took him to Pontius Pilate. All right, let's go from that to Matthew's chapter Say the same, 28. We're going to read where they killed him. All right? Verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So all this went on what? That, that day, after the Passover. When the Passover was kept that night, that morning they delivered him unto the, unto the 27, they delivered him to the chief priests, and they took him and they counseled him to put him to death. That day they put him to death. When he gave up the ghost, how do we know that? Go to chapter 28. This is easy reading. Verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the others Mary to see the sepulchre. The next morning they came to see the sepulchre. Alright? At the end of the Sabbath. It says, And behold, there was an earthquake of an angel of the Lord from the heaven, and came and rolled back the stone of the door, and sat upon it. His countenance was like the lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And they feared for him, they, and, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said to the women, Fear not, ye, for I know that you see Jesus, which is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And has come to see the place, and uh, come ye see the place where the Lord lie. So they came. They said they came to see the angel. Said he's not here. Where's he at? He's gone. This is what. In the end of the Sabbath, as the day began towards the first day of the week. So let's go the way they said this. If that's the case, if he had the Passover on Friday night, which you call uh, at even. He ate it. The next morning, he was what? Imprisoned. He was killed that day. And then this says, is rising towards the dawn of the first day of the week, which would be after the seventh day Sabbath. How could that be three days? How could Good Friday through Saturday, through Sunday give you three days? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit. Beware. It didn't happen like that. It did not happen like that. It's mathematically impossible if you count the days. So he didn't die on a good Friday. 
He didn't die then. But he did ro- he did rose when? When the Sabbath began to end, the first day of the week. Saturday night when the Sabbath is ending to the first day of the week, Sunday, he did rise. But if you, if you count Good Friday, it won't give you that. That means it had happened a day earlier, on Thursday, according to what they said. Right? All right. <coughs> I hope that was edifying. Now we're going to begin with this uh, fallacy of what you call Easter. Let's go to where is <coughs> Easter recorded in the Bible? Let's go to Acts 12. Now, mind the word Easter is recorded in the Bible. We're just going to explain it. Acts 12, verse 1. Now, about the time that Herod, the, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, he, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, because we had some wicked Israelites, same ones that gave off our Lord and Savior up to be crucified, it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So around the time of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is when they did this. All right? And when he had, and when he had apprehended him, he put, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intent, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So they said they're going to hold him till after Easter. So what is this day Easter that some of the people were celebrating? Because you had some wicked Israelites that were celebrating. You had other nations, heathen, that were celebrating. What was this Easter day talking about? Why were they celebrating? Where does it come from? Let's go to 1 Samuel. That's why the Bible says study show by self approved. You in the Christian church, you all don't study. You all are caught up in traditions of men, song, song worship, prayer warriors. The one thing you won't do is repent, keep these commandments that God has commanded, and get the understanding thereof. You believe you can love God without keeping his commandments. It's impossible. They're one and the same. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. First John 5 and 3. That's what's found there. All right. First Samuel uh, chapter 7, verse 3. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then, then put away the strange God of Astaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. He said you had to put away your strange gods in Astaroth. That word Astaroth, that goddess Astaroth is where it was translated to today, today what you know as Easter. It was also called Ishtar. Let's go into it. Let's prove that real quick. Right? I'm going to read out a book that's called The Prophet's Dictionary. I'm on page 67 and we're going to read about this god. Let me see if I can zoom in. Is that if you can see? We're going to read about this goddess, Asherah. Right? So here we go. Asherah, a Canaanite goddess identified with Venus and the Babylon goddess Ishtar, as we get Ishtar from. A Phoenician lunar deity synonymous with pregnancy. That was what, that's why you have the Easter eggs. It's a representative of fertility. It says sensual love and fertility. Her, 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 she required lensatious worship as a, as a patron goddess of war and sex. All right? Let's go to the dictionary. There we go. This is a, uh, it's a little beat up, but this is a Webster's Dictionary. And I'm going to move the camera over here so you can see for yourself. Today I'm going to read about. The day is called Easter. And let's go to the part that's highlighted. The coming at or near Easter, uh, O-E, Estore, perhaps from Estore, the goddess of, sorry, my hand is moving too much, the goddess of, the goddess of dawn, whose festival was celebrated at the Spring equinox. So it says the coming at the near Easter, as the goddess of dawn. So Easter or Asherah or Ishtar was a false goddess. It was the goddess of dawn or spring, what people say. All right, I'm going to keep on hitting you with this stuff. Let's go to uh, Acts 19. And we're going to pick up in video. Alright, this is part three of the video. 
uh, concerning Good Friday and Pagan Easter. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off at, Acts, the 19th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 27. So the point that I'm about to read about is that there was a silversmith, a man who molten uh, silver uh, by the name of Demetrius. He had a problem with Paul and coming in teaching that the goddess that they were creating, making, and worshiping was a false goddess. And they were complaining. Let's go. Uh, Acts 19, verse 27. Uh, it says, and, not, and that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Who is this, who is this goddess Diana? It's the same Ashtoreth, the same Ishtar, uh, the same Easter that you worship today. Let's prove it. Back to this book, Prophet's Dictionary. We're going to read Diana. Let me try to see if I can get you to see this real quick. All right. There's a name, Diana. And we're going to read about her. Uh, we're going to start right here. Okay. It says, um, The religious worship uh, vetigrating the goddess of emphasis uh, that emphasizes uh, matriarchalic, uh, matriarchalic authority figures. Dianic. This is the word which is, uh, this is the word uh, I'm sorry, which is that are mainly opponents of patriarchal religion used to reference to their deity, the goddess Diana. See right there, that's what I want, the goddess Diana. Same one we read about in Acts 19. It says, This goddess is identified in the Bible as Diana of Ephesus. For this reason, Dianic worship, which usually excludes subjugate male deities and male authorities to females. So, what happens, the women take over. In this. Let's jump on down. The uh, Wicca in all forms is largely a feminist as a throwback to the ancient pagan, listen, ancient pagan religions that revered pre Canaanite Astara and not, and what? What's this one over here? Astar. That Astar is the same Asterisk that you read about. And it says, and other fertility goddess of the various civilizations. All right. <coughs> so Diana was also known as Ashtar. All right. We're going to show you a picture of Diana right here. And then we're going to go, and I want you to remember this picture. This book, real quick, is called Ancient Rome. All right. By Nile Rogers. And we're going to go to Ephesus, the wonder of the world. But let's zoom in on Diana. Here's the image of Diana. If you look at her, you'll see on her, on this image, many breasts. Symbolic of eggs. That's so much of her name. Above, Armitus, which is all called, that's another name for her, Diana. The great goddess of Ephesus portrayed as a fertility goddess with many breasts in the statue in the second AD. Alright? She was referred to as a fertility goddess. So here we let's be up to today's time. Easter. And remember that image that you just saw. Alright? Let's let's get to this time. Easter. Where's that book? Here we go. Here's a book I have. It's called Ideals of Easter. This is a Christian publication. That's put out. That was put out many years ago. All right. <coughs> Look at this. The sun, the moon, and the rooster. Look at this image right here. This is a tree made up of many eggs. All right. Look at this. Similar to this image right here. But we're going to read about this, so there will be no doubt what's saying. Down through the ages, people have commemorated in festival the story of the reawakening of the nature and spring. The legend about the sun, the moon, and the rooster dates back to pagan times, to pagan times of old Slovakia. 
but like other cherished myth and traditions has become part of Slovakian celebration of Easter this became salvation of Easter the story is uh, is told to children shortly before Easter as traditional decorations are placed on Easter egg trees similar to sh the one shown on the opposite page look how familiar and how similar they are All right it said this date back to pagan times we're going to go back one page I want you to use this is part of it why Easter eggs in your Easter here we go we're going to read this nice and slow and let's get to it. the custom of exchanging Easter uh, the custom of exchanging colored eggs in spring the season which begin, brings new life in nature began back began way back in the days of ancient Persia and Egypt that makes sense Asherah was a Canaanite goddess however the first recorded Christians to use colored eggs were Macedonians they dyed most of their eggs red the color symbolizing the blood of Christ shed on the cross so they took this pagan custom these Greeks Macedonians and that makes sense because we just read where in Corinthians in Ephesus which was what a Greek state that was, it was Asia Minor but it was a Greek state that was run by the, by the Romans uh, Alexander took that place over that they said it was what? It was an old went way back dating to Persian and uh, and uh, Canaanite festivals. Let me read it per for a Persian and Egyptians. All right, we read in Second Samuel's about that. So where do you get where do you get this Easter egg from? Pagan times, pagan. Hey, listen for you Christians. Bunnies don't lay eggs. It does. They do not lay eggs. What does the egg have symbolic to do with Christ? Nothing. They took a pagan custom, they smacked it with the, the, the resurrection of Christ together, and they call it Easter. Hey, that's what you all follow today. All right? One second, real quick. I'm going to go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Get a pocket for real quick. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. In your pocket for you. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. Verse. I'll start with verse 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation, because in the creature of God they are become abomination, a stumbling block to the souls of men, and a snare to the feet of the unwise. This is you with that Easter. Easter has become a stumbling block and a snare to you. Jump on down to verse 16. It says, Thus, in a process of time, ungodly custom, like Easter, grows strong, was kept as law, and give and graven images were worshipped by the commandment of king. So, remember, it was a Macedonian custom, and what do you think Alexander did? He forced the people into the worship of this. That's called Hellenist, Hellenized people. So the day Easter you celebrate is not of the most high. Remember we read earlier in First Corinthians uh, two. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies of fame and deceit. Now, if there's any Christian out there that can refute these scriptures, feel free. Bring forth your strong reason in the Bible. But what you call Good Friday is mathematically impossible. You only get two days. And it says three days he will be in the earth buried. So Friday couldn't be the day. And Easter is pagan, dated back to what? The Babylonian customs, or actually even further back, the uh, Canaanite customs. So the scriptures we read, I hope it was edifying to you, brothers and sisters. For those that are celebrating that stuff, come out of her. That you don't be partakers of the sins of this world. And come back and serve the Most High as prescribed in His Holy Word. So with that, giving all praises to the Most High in Christ. And we say Shalom.